I want to share with you my current fragrance obsessions. These are fragrances that I've used the most in the last three months. Basically, you can call them my winter favorites. And I want to start with two perfumes that feature the note of patchouli. I realized in recent months that I am becoming completely obsessed with this note. I've always liked this note in fragrances, but lately, perhaps because I've discovered a few really amazing fragrances featuring this note, I am gravitating towards patchouli fragrances probably more than any other. And so the first one on the list is Tony Iommi Monkey Special from Zergio. I did a dedicated video reviewing this fragrance. If you haven't watched it, I'm going to link it up here. Uh, but I have been using this fragrance nonstop. Completely obsessed with it, completely intoxicating by it. Just incredible. There are a lot of notes in this fragrance. I'm not going to read all of them. The two main notes in here are for me, at least, are passion fruit and patchouli. Yes, there is the note of leather in here, which sort of <laughs> scared me at the beginning when I just heard about this fragrance, but I don't get leather. I really don't get leather. I get this amazingly sweet, juicy, delicious, the most delicious passion fruit that is balanced by this earthy, patchouli. Just outstanding. Both of these notes play together so beautifully. They create this amazing union for me. I never expected to fall in love with this fragrance as much as I have. It is incredible. It is absolutely intoxicating, impossible to stop wearing it. Love it. And I really think that this fragrance is pretty universal as far as when you can wear it. Because you have this balance of patchouli with sweet passion fruit, you know, you can wear it in the warm weather because it's quite fruity. And you can wear it in uh, the cold weather because it has that backbone of earthy patchouli. So it is quite universal. And I see myself continuing to wear it uh, when it gets warmer in the spring, for sure. Second one is another patchouli fragrance. And that is Crush On Me from Unique You Luxury. Yes, here we have patchouli again. It is mixed with caramel. There is also ginger in here and there's also bergamot. These are kind of the most prominent notes. So again, you have this amazing union of caramel and earthy patchouli. And then everything is sort of um, freshened up or softened a little bit by ginger and bergamot, which bring in a lot of uh, freshness and a lot of um, zing to this fragrance. And again, it just works together. This is a beastly fragrance for me. It lasts, it projects, it creates this amazing trail. You know, whenever I walk by, when I'm wearing this, everyone can smell me easily, easily. Uh, it's amazing. It lasts all day and it, it's never a skin scent. It, it always projects throughout the whole day. I know this is not for everyone, again, because there is a really strong note of patchouli. Not everyone is going to love it. I don't think uh, this is a safe blind buy at all. But for me, it was a blind buy that worked out beautifully. So again, I've worn this fragrance a ton. Next one is a scent that has become a staple work fragrance for me. And it is... Uh, from EBK Parfums, Ruby and Vanilla Intense. I think that's the full name. I mean, I still can't get over the bottle. I absolutely love, love it. It is so luxurious. And I think it fits the scent beautifully, just beautifully. This is an amazing vanilla. There are some, I, I don't remember all the notes, to be honest. There's vanilla. I think there are some floral notes. There are these velvety notes, which at first I thought, okay, that seems a little weird, but... They actually make sense here because this fragrance is truly velvety. It is very creamy. It is very round. Uh, I do get some floral, a bit of floral nuances in here, but 
um I don't even know what these florals are. Like, I think there is iris, rose, there could be some other flowers. I don't know. It's impossible for me to distinguish any specific flowers, but I know that there is a, a bit of floral background in this fragrance. Um, this one, it has good lasting power, but uh, I don't think this is very projecting and I don't think it leaves a huge trail. That is why this is a perfect scent for me to go to the office because I can smell it on myself all day long, but I don't bother other people that are around me. Uh, the other thing is, even though it's vanilla, it's definitely sweet, but it's not very gourmand. Like I don't think I would call this vanilla gourmand. There, there are no uh, edible qualities to it in, in my mind. So again, you, you know, it's not something that's really sweet, that's really overpowering. That's why I absolutely love wearing it to the office in the morning. I just kind of automatically now go to this fragrance the days that I go to the office and I wear this one. Absolutely beautiful. Next one has kind of become um, a classic in my collection, a fragrance that I've had for a long time. It was one of uh, my first niche uh, purchases and it is still going strong. I still love it. It is Lyra from Zerjoff. I mean, there are a lot of notes in here, but mostly for me, it's um, caramel and lemon. It's a uh, a delicious sweet lemon pie. Um, that's what it smells like to me. This is, uh, you know, I wear this when I want to be comforted. This is this is a fragrance that brings comfort to me. That kind of um, calms me down when I don't want to think about anything important or anything uh, upsetting. This fragrance helps me to do that. You know, it just helps me relax and unwind and kind of just be in this happy, ignorant bubble, which, you know, sometimes you need that, especially with, you know, the state of the world right now. So yeah, this is the fragrance that definitely does it for me. And, you know, many people say that this one doesn't have good performance. Fortunately on me, it performs pretty well. I can't say that it's beastly or it's the most long lasting fragrance. No, but you know, it easily lasts four or five hours, which is, you know, very decent in my mind, very decent. So I still really enjoy it. I still use it quite often, especially have been reaching for it a lot in the last couple of months. Next one is uh, a newer addition to my collection. I actually don't know if uh, I showed it to you in a haul already, or maybe it will come out after this video, depending on how I post them. But this is Trastevere from Pantheon Roma. What a gem. What a gem. Don't hear a lot of people talking about it. Don't really hear a lot of people talking about this house in general. And this is really the only one that I have from this house, although I will be testing more for sure because I'm so impressed with this scent. It is so unique. It is so different. It has chestnuts. It has vanilla. It has artemisia, something else. But really, to me, it's very nutty. It feels very nutty. It has very strong uh, boozy note. Like there is some kind of liquor, some kind of alcohol added to this fragrance. Uh, it has a little bit of vanilla adding sweetness, but not overpowering sweetness at all. And I even get, you know, sometimes I get some hints of like uh, cocoa powder or like chocolate or something. They're very light and they're like, come, they, they come and they go, you know, they're not always here, but I do get whiffs of that sometimes. So gorgeous, unique, very addictive scent, very, very beautiful. Next one on my list is Miel de R.B. from Chopard. Again, have been using this fragrance a lot. Actually, both me and my husband, he loves this scent. Uh, this is a stunning, stunning tea scent. So in addition to tea, there is honey in here, there are spices, um, there is pomegranate. And you know, I really can feel most of the notes that are listed. Yes, it's definitely a tea scent, although I can't say that it has like really, really prominent tea note. No, everything is balanced out. There is a little bit of tea in here, yes. There's definitely honey. I, I, honey is pretty strong, but it's like, 
very natural honey, like some kind of, I don't know, organic honey or something. It's not very synthetic. It's not very chemical. It's not very processed. It, it feels very natural. Uh, and there's definitely pomegranate here. And it's not just pomegranate juice, but it's, it's the whole fruit of pomegranate. So you feel the juice and you feel the skin, you know, everything is here. I don't really get a lot of spices in here. In fact, I don't really get any spices in here, but I do get some freshness as if there was a little bit of lemon added to this tea as well. Gorgeous. This is so, so stunning. Very unisex. I think the scent is underrated. I wish more people would talk about it. It is so gorgeous. It is very understated. It's very elegant. It is very sophisticated. It is very calming. I think the scent is very calming. This is one of those scents that also helps me kind of um, unwind and relax. So gorgeous, gorgeous scent. And I continue to be obsessed with it. Next scent is a long time favorite. And that is the only one from Dolce & Gabbana. You know, it's, it's interesting with this fragrance because uh, it's either, either I don't use it and it just stands there or when I start using it, I cannot put it down. I really, and that happens every time. As soon as I use it just once, I have to keep using it. I get completely addicted to it and completely obsessed with it. This is what happened in February. You know, it's been standing there, kind of haven't really used it a lot. And I decided, okay, let me use it. And I could not put it down for four days straight, like literally four days straight, I reached for it and I thought, okay, I, I gotta use something else. No, I wanted to use this fragrance and nothing else. Absolutely addictive. I mean, this is, you know, caramel, vanilla, coffee, pear, there are some florals in here. And to me, it's mostly, you know, coffee, although it's not just straight up coffee. Like to me, this is some kind of coffee drink. You know, it's not very strong coffee. It's um, latte or caramel macchiato or something like that, you know? So I definitely feel like I got a Starbucks drink. And there is a bit of fruitiness from pear here. It's kind of a um, freshens it up a little bit, you know? Um, yeah, that's basically what it smells like. I know many say that it's similar to black opium from YSL. I don't know, outside of having a coffee note that's common to both, they're not that similar in my mind. Honestly, they're not. And I prefer this one so much more to black opium. I mean, I would take this one any day over black opium. I just like it. So yeah, this is to me extremely addictive scent. Like I said, once I start using it, I can't put it down. And that is exactly what happened this winter. Next one is Sao Paulo from Carvin. And this was the scent that I used a ton at the beginning of winter. Like December and kind of beginning of January, I used the scent a lot. This is a scent that's kind of, um, similar to Amber de Alexandrie from Boucheron. It's very warm, it's very sweet, it's very spicy, uh, it's very ambery. The, the big difference here is that there is also a boozy note in here. I think, I think there is a note of liquor in here um, and that is pretty evident. So it is definitely boozy, sweet, warm, uh, cozy, enveloping. Gorgeous, gorgeous scent, especially for cold winter. Absolutely beautiful. Again, a little bit underrated. Um, yeah, definitely a little bit underrated. I, I really, really recommend trying it. It's a beautiful, beautiful scent. Next one is a scent that kind of um, shocked me last year when I tested it because um, when it first came out, I had zero interest in even trying it, never mind buying it, I absolutely was convinced that I was going to hate it. And when I almost accidentally uh, uh, sampled it for the first time, I was shocked. I mean, really shocked because I didn't just like it. I loved it. I totally fell in love with it and absolutely had to get the full bottle. And that is Bitter Peach from Tom Ford. What a huge surprise. I mean, really, what a huge surprise. There are a ton of notes in this fragrance, but obviously the star of this fragrance is peach. But to me, it's not just peach. It's 
uh, the combination with a uh, blood orange that makes it so interesting. You know, um, they just work together amazingly. It's, it becomes very juicy. It becomes very sweet. It becomes very meaty. It's kind of very meaty, uh, ripe peach and the the juiciness from uh, blood orange is just beautiful and then of course the third main note for me here is patchouli so there you go it turns out i have um three patchouli dominant fragrances in this list see i told you i'm i'm obsessed with this uh with this note right now so if we're talking about current obsessions my note obsession is the note of patchouli for sure um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's this earthy patchouli with the, uh, these, um, juicy and sweet fruits of peach and, um, blood orange, gorgeous, intoxicating, beautiful. Uh, for me, this turns out to be a jam. I know some people love it. Some people hate it. It, it didn't get like the most amazing reviews when it first came out and I totally get it. It's not everyone's cup of tea, but surprisingly um, as someone who is not a big fan of the note of peach, this is a gorgeous peach. And the last one that I'm going to show you is a fragrance from Sense of Wood, uh, and that is Praline in Maple. I have a travel spray for now, but definitely want to get a full bottle. And in fact, when I did my uh, hole where I hold these travel sprays. Uh, I mentioned in that video as well that I wanted to get a full bottle and uh, many of you messaged me saying that now the full bottle is available on Sense of Wood website because uh, when I purchased it and when I filmed that video, it was not available yet. So thank you to everyone who let me know that it is available. I will definitely be getting it in the future. Now, this fragrance uh i'm not gonna spend too much time on it because you know like i said i talked about it in a hole not that long ago uh this to me is a child of two fragrances this is like combining um by the fireplace from replica with unknown pleasures from kerosene that's what this scent smells like it is definitely deep woody smoky like by the fireplace and then it has that um amazing sweetness very similar creamy kind of condensed milk like of sweetness like it we have in unknown pleasures and it's like the marriage of these two fragrances absolutely stunning especially especially in the cold weather it works beautifully and you know it might look like i haven't used a lot but i've used this fragrance so many times but it, this is strong this is the strongest fragrance from sense of wood that i have tried really the strongest uh the loudest the most projecting the most long lasting yeah it's this one so you really really don't need to use a lot you know one time as someone who likes to overspray I sprayed a bit too much and I almost choked everyone around me. Like even my husband who typically doesn't mind me over spraying said, yeah, okay, today you really went overboard. Like don't spray this much because it is quite powerful. So yeah, it needs to be used in moderation. You really don't need a ton of this fragrance, but I absolutely love it. So there you go. These are my current fragrance obsessions, fragrances that I have used the most in the last three months. I would love to know what have you used the most during winter, during the last few months. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please remember to give me a thumbs up and subscribe, and I will see you soon in the next video. Bye!